ಆನಂದಂ ಪರಮಸುಖದಂ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಮಸ್ಯಾಕ್ಷ್ಯಂ ಏಕ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವೀಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ವೆಲ್ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ವ್ಯೂವರ್ಸ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ವಾಚಿಂಗ್ ಅಸ್ ಲೈವ್ ಥ್ರೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಟಿ ವಿ ಥ್ರೂ ಕೆಲಸ ಟಿ ವಿ ಥ್ರೂ ಹಿಂದೂಸಮ್ ನೌ ಟಿ ವಿ ಫೇಸ್ಬುಕ್ ಲೈವ್ ಟ್ವಿಟರ್ ಲೈವ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಲೈವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಇನ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಅನ್ ಆಪ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸೆಗ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸೆಗ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ and i can say something very unique which we all don't even know and we are getting a good feedback we are getting a feedback from the viewers that they wanted to know more and more contribution of swami ji the way swami ji has recreated the swami the way swami ji has revived sanatan hindu dharma but before we move ahead i would like to give a small gist from yesterday's live satsang as somebody said that just like nataraja the moment he starts the tandava ananda tandava he doesn't bother about if his anklets drop means anything happens which is not when you see something which is not going perfect you should not stop the way nataraja keep dancing we should continue the same anand tandava samji said if you are feeling stuck in life it is actually a delusion but if you are actually stuck it's a death never stuck in your life never get stuck in your life again and again just like nataraja be more intense the moment you bring more and more intensity if you are feeling stuck in one phase one project have nine more projects the moment you are not seeing any movement in one aspect move to the other but don't stop don't get stuck keep moving keep doing keep doing keep doing and finally you will see you will be actually out of that feeling of getting stuck such beautiful environment we get into the uh, the space which swami ji has created through shri kailasa the shri kailasa ecosystem is that same space to keep you moving just like nataraja to keep dancing need but don't not bothering about what is not going perfect what is what is really stuck in life there is there is nothing like where you have to even think about it such a intense lifestyle samji has provided and today we we really want all of you to understand this whole science very beautifully the temple based lifestyle samji has established and from years and years samji has been explaining the science behind temples when samji born samji was born he started doing puja he's having his own deities everything so personalized and so precise so today's segment is completely based on the shri kailasa ecosystem which is nothing else a temple based lifestyle and of course we all know that we are celebrating mahakumbha abhishekam on january 30th so first let us understand what is it behind why we are having temples what is the science behind it let us listen directly from swami ji actually over the years swami ji has explained a lot about temples micro managed details about temples so let us all hear directly from swami ji what is the science behind temples temples 
are systematically built infrastructures to optimize this experience transmission and energy transmission temples are infrastructures built to optimize this experience transmission please understand all temples are expansion of the human frame human frame is the miniature of the cosmos it means what all temples are also miniature of the cosmos to transmit this experience to human body the garbha mandir garbha griha the energy source rajas tamba flat pole is the transformer everyone sits inside the enclosure will feel that very strength and energy and vibration will feel the strength and energy and vibration for mass and light and it was consistently used for mass and light treatment at least 800 to 1000 years electron gets to handle weapons maybe the brutal attack on that enlightened community whatever may be the reason the infrastructure is left without being decided to reuse and restart use all those huge domes are amplifying mechanism together modern day dish tvs antennas mobile towers all of them work in the level of certain frequency where the words pictures visuals can be transmitted see the verbalization and visualization names and forms can be transmitted from one place to another place through these mobile towers dish tv antennas but the temple towers are created to transmit super consciousness from one place to another place please understand in minakshi's time there was television conscious television it used to be in stone slab and if you just sit in front of that stone tv meditate connect with meenakshi she will appear live 
and answer whatever you want so each the stone slabs only slowly later on became deities you can see in our temples this happening the tvs in which i am appearing and speaking are slowly becoming deities they are receiving worship flowers are offered to it aarti is done to it incense is given to it now all our temples are planning to have a separate throne for this tv in los angeles already i am on the throne the tv is in the throne the tv means which people are seeing me have already become deity same way please understand the stones through which people are able to connect with the super consciousness have become deity same way all our temples deities everything is a connecting mechanism with super consciousness the mechanism which connects with the super consciousness please understand the deities and temples are not just sentimental carved stones are they are not just artistic sculptures they are conscious transmitters they raise you to the super consciousness in each house in vedic tradition we have a puja room all the puja rooms are your private conscious airport our conscious transmission centers the main temple is the place from where continuous super consciousness is radiating so if you just sit and connect with a deep feeling connection so in those days human beings were so beautiful and simple just remembering the name of the deity is enough they are already in connection with the deity that feeling connection mechanical parts of the brain when your non mechanical parts of the brain is awakened you will understand temples deities how useful they are how directly useful they are how they are part of our life how they enrich our life and how they make human beings intelligent enlightened these are the methods created to create enlightened civilization these grand temples are not built as an just monument they are built as a conscious movement it is not like egyptian pyramids monuments no it is conscious movement to raise human beings to the highest consciousness to make human beings experience the highest purpose understand unclutch use the temples to achieve the highest consciousness so as we heard directly from samji the science behind temples the way why temples are being built what it does to humanity but this description the samji has given it's much much later but actually the whole temple science 
the way Swamiji has learned, the way Swamiji started reviving is right from his childhood. The, as soon as Swamiji came down on the planet Earth and in very early age of his childhood, he started very beautifully learning all the pujas. Swamiji loved temple the most. And I think to explain and to express this emotion and the love for temples, the, the way Swamiji loved temples, I think there is nobody else who can explain it better other than our autobiography of the avatar head. I would like to introduce and invite Poonan Sanyasi of Nityananda Order, Maniti Bhaktikananda Swami. Nityananda Ma. Nityananda Ma, thank you very much. As we all know, we are about to enter into the Kumbhabhishekam ceremony of the Nityanandeshwara Paramashiva and Nityanandeshwari Parashakti, the, one of the evolving as one of the largest sh sh golden Shiva temples in the world in Adikailash, Bangalore, Adinam. It is poised for 30th of January in just a few days from now. And the preliminary rituals are going to start on the 28th of January itself about which we will share with you in detail in just a few minutes. Before that, you heard Manitya Bhakti Priyananda say about this whole, the delivery of the science of temples to the world and nurturing the temple-based lifestyle from this incarnation of Paramashiva, His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Sri Nityananda Paramashiva, beloved Bhagavan, started not just when he declared his Satya Sankalpa, 20 years ago to humanity that he will deliver the science of enlightenment and gift the life of Jivan Mukti to millions of individuals around the world. And or not just when he uh, first started delivering the science of temples publicly, but it started way back, almost a year or two after he was born. What we have to understand is an avatar, an incarnation comes with an avataric mission and it doesn't start from his public announcement of it. It starts from the day he lands on the planet Earth because he lands as an ecosystem by himself. He lands as a presence and the presence starts radiating from day one, which to which is testimony of thousands of people in Thiruvannamalai, his birthplace, the, the place where he assumed the human form at the spiritual nerve center of located in South India, the spiritual nerve center of the entire universe, Thiruvannamalai where he assumed the human body and right from that time the people who lived around him who are still living today share how his presence pulled them towards him and how he impacted each of each and every one of their lives like how he does today the sharings we have from devotees disciples and sannyasis today of the impact of the incarnation in their life is exactly the same as the sharings of the people who lived around the incarnation, beloved Bhagavan, when he was two, three years old and from there on. We've had wonderful sharings from people and today you're going to see a testimony, a sharing from one of the chief priests of the Arunachaleshwara temple in Thiruvannamalai, Sri Harasinatha Shivacharya, who offers the worship to the main presiding deity of the Arunachaleshwara temple, Paramashiva himself, who is called Arunachaleshwara in this temple, and who has memories which are, even if I say vivid, it's too small a word. For him, he can just connect immediately to his days with the young avatar, the incarnation Swamiji, in his life inside the temple, because inside the temple in Thiruvannamalai is where Swamiji literally lived. In fact, uh, one day jovially Swamiji was sharing with the disciples, if ever you guys were to build a memorial for me, it would not be anywhere near my home or in any other place where you'd be thinking of, it would be inside temple. Because that is where he literally lived and many times spent even the nights in the temple. The temple watchman was his best friend. And in those days, it was not so stringent, not so crowded. Uh, so it uh, facilitated the temple watchman to uh, allow him to stay even the nights in the temple because he did not want to leave the energy station, the deities, Paramashiva, and go back to his home in the night. So those are profound sharings of 
various people which we will be presenting through uh, this free satsang segment to you continuously in bringing out the avatar leela the life story of the incarnation on the planet but today you're going to watch a short video sharing from shri halasinath gurukul the shivacharya of arunachali shiva temple who's now retired his sons are now serving in the temple offering worship to the main arunachali shiva deity but when he in his hey days when he was the serving priest of the temple he shares how every single day swami ji would be inside the temple with the chief priests like a shadow never leaving them and ever ready to serve them in every possible way he can so that he can be involved in the whole happening of that enlightenment ecosystem there that enlightenment ecosystem of tiruvannamalai is the enlightenment ecosystem for the whole world it radiates the energy literally for the whole world because that is where parmashiva landed as a shaft of light and installed himself there in three forms as the arunachaleshwara linga to which the worship is offered every day to which the chief priest was going to share with us used to offer during his time of service and as the sacred mountain form called arunachala which stands in tiruvannamalai and as the as a living incarnation the third form that parmashiva has installed himself as through a promise to humanity that he will be available in these three forms the worshipable linga form the mountain form and a living incarnation and the current living incarnation of parmashiva true to his promise is his divine holiness bhagavan shri nityananda parmashivam references to which are there in the ancient scriptures and through the sharings of the incarnations who left their body like bhagavan shri ramana maharishi and yogi ram surat kumar swami gal so now you're going to watch this very delightful sharing from shri hala senata gurukal as to what swami ji would do in the temple right from when he was young and how he would be a shadow to the priests who served in the temple never leaving the enlightenment ecosystem till it was time to go home watch the video அண்ணா போற்றி கண்ணார்க்க மிளே கயிலே போற்றி அண்ணாமலையாருக்கு அரோகரா குரு பிரம்மா குரு விஷ்ணு குரு தேவோ மகேஸ்வரா குரு சாட்சாத் பரம்பிரம்மம் தஸ்மே ஸ்ரீ குரவே நமஹ குருபியோ நமஹ ஹரி ஓம் ஸ்ரீ ராம்லிங்க பாதே பியோ நமஹ குருபியோ நமஹ இன்று நான் திருவண்ணாமலை அருணாச்சலேஸ்வர தேவஸ்தானத்தில் என்னுடைய பாட்டனார் வெங்கட சுப்பிரமணிய குருக்கள் சோனாத்திரி குருக்கள் வழியாக ராமலிங்க சிவாச்சாரியார் சாமூர் சிவாச்சாரியுடைய மகனாக பிறந்தவன் என் எங்களுடைய வாரிசு பெரிய குருக்கள் வகைராவை சேர்ந்தவர்கள் நாங்கள் என்னுடைய பெயர் பட்டம் எஸ் ஹாலாசிநாத சிவாச்சாரியார் நான் வந்து ரெண்டு துறையில் இருந்தவன் ஒன்று ஆசிரியராக பணிபுரிந்தவன் அதே சமயத்தில் மூதாதைகளுடைய ஆன்மீக பக்தியின் காரணமாகவும் எங்களுடைய வம்சாவளியின் காரணமாகவும் கோவிலுக்கு வந்து நித்திய கைங்கரி செய்து கொண்டிருந்தேன் அப்படி வந்து கடைசியிலே அண்ணாமலையாரிடம் வந்து பணி செய்து கொண்டிருக்க செய்து கொண்டு இருக்கிறேன் ஆன்மீக பணியிலே அப்படி வழியிலே வந்து என்னுடைய மகன்கள் மூணு பேரும் இப்பொழுது பணியாற்றி கொண்டிருக்கிறார்கள் நித்யானந்த சுவாமிகளை பற்றி சொல்ல வேண்டுமானால் அவர் திருவண்ணாமலையிலே பிறந்தவர் நித்யானந்த சுவாமிகள் அவர் சின்ன வயசிலே ரொம்ப ஆன்மீக பக்தியுடையவர் கடவெண்பால் அன்பு மிகுந்து காணப்பட்டு இருந்தார் அவர் தினமும் காலையில் மாலையிலும் கோவிலுக்கு வந்து தரிசனம் செய்வது வருவார் அப்பொழுது கோவிலே நித்திய பூஜை நடைபெறும் போது அங்கே பணிகள் அவருக்கு உண்டான என்ன பணிகள் செய்ய முடியுமோ அதை தீபாராதனை அலங்கார தீபாராதனை மாதிரி எல்லாம் அழுக்காக இருந்தால் அதை தொடர்த்தி வைத்து நல்ல முறையில் செய்து வைப்பார் இப்போ கீழே உள்ளே இருக்கிற இதுக்கு தரையை சுத்தம் செய்து வைப்பார் அந்த மாதிரி பல விதமான அந்த காலத்தில் சிறு வயதிலிருந்தே அவருக்கு ஆன்மீக பற்றோடு செய்து வந்திருந்தார் கோவில்லையும் சில வேலைகளை யாராவது குறை இருந்தால் அவர்களுக்கு பதிலாக இவரும் கிட்ட இருந்து ஆன்மீக பணி செய்து வைப்பார் 
தவிர்த்தையில் கூட வருவது உடல் அடித்து வருவது எல்லா பணிகளும் செய்து வந்தார் அதே மாதிரி அர்ஜி ஜாமத்திலையும் கூட இருந்து அர்ஜி ஜாமத்திலே பள்ளி அறையிலே அவரும் ஒரு பணியை ஆற்றி சுவாமியை சுமந்து கொண்டு வந்து பள்ளி அறையை முடித்து வைப்பார் இப்படி அவர் பல காலம் அந்த ஆன்மீக துறையை பணியாக இருந்ததினால் அண்ணாமலையர் அருளாலே அவர்களுக்கு மனம் சாந்தி அடைந்து அவருக்கு ஞானோபதியம் பெற்று இப்பொழுது பெரிய சுவாமியாக இருக்கிறார் மிக்க மகிழ்ச்சி அவருடைய ஆசிரமத்துக்கெல்லாம் நான் போயிருக்கேன் அங்கே நல்ல முறையில் மிக நல்ல முறையில் நல்லதாக செஞ்சுருக்கிறார் ஆகவே அவருடைய ஆன்மீக பற்றி மேலும் வளர வேண்டும் என்பது அண்ணாமலையார் அருளை பிரார்த்தனை செய்து கொண்டு அவர்களை வாழ்த்துகின்றேன் அப்புறம் நாங்கள் கோவிலில் வேலைகள் ஏதாவது வீட்டில் ஏதாவது விட்டுட்டு வந்தாலோ இல்லது கோவிலேருந்து ஏதாவது எடுத்துக்கொண்டு செல் செல்லக்கூடிய நிவேத்தியம் மற்ற பொருள்கள் எடுத்துக்கொண்டு செல்ல வேண்டும் என்றாலும் அந்த நித்யானந்த சுவாமிகள் அன்போடு பணிவோடு அதை வீட்டுக்கு எடுத்துன்னு வந்து கொண்டாந்து கொடுத்துட்டு திரும்ப வந்து கோயிலுக்கு வந்து பணிகளை செய்து விட்டு போவார் ஆமாம் அபிஷேகம்லாம் பண்ணாக்கா விடாத பார்த்துட்டு இருப்பார் நல்ல பக்தர் இந்த போற்றி தமிழ் போற்றி அதெல்லாம் பாடுவார் அவர் நல்ல அதெல்லாம் நல்லா பார்த்து எல்லாம் செய்வார் அந்த காலத்தில் எனக்கு இந்த ப இது கூட வந்து பொக்கிஷத்துலேருந்து பொருள்கள் எடுத்து கொண்டு வர்றதுக்கும் அவர் உதவி செய்வார் நகைகள் எடுத்து கொண்டு வர்றது ஆடைகள் எடுத்து கொண்டு வர்றது இதெல்லாம் உதவி கோவில் உள்ள என்னென்ன பணிகள் அவரால் செய்ய முடியுமோ அத்தனை பணிகளும் செய்து வந்தார் மிக நல்ல முறை நந்தவனத்தில் சுற்றி இருக்குது அங்கே அந்த காலத்துலேருந்தே இருந்தது இப்பயும் இருக்குது அங்கேருந்து பூ வரும்போதே காலையில் பிரித்து எடுத்துன்னு வந்து சுவாமிக்கு சாப்பிடுவார் சொல்லுவார் சாப்பிட சொல்லுவார் அதே மாதிரி மா சாயந்தரத்துலேயும் கொண்டு உற்சவ காலங்களுக்கு காலை மாலை ரெண்டு வேளையிலும் சுவாமியோடு கூடையே இருந்து பணிவடிகளை செய்வதற்கு மறக்க மாட்டார் கூடையே சாமி நடை ஆரம்பிக்கிறது முதல் உற்சவம் ஆரம்பம் முதல் முடிவு வரை கடைசி வரல இருந்து சுவாமியை பள்ளியர்களை சேர்த்து விட்டு தான் வீட்டுக்கு போவார் அந்த அளவுக்கு நல்ல குணங்கள் ஆமாம் வீதி விழா உற்சவத்தில் நிறைய பங்கு கொண்டு அது முடியும் வரை இருந்து சுவாமியை how beautifully shivajaya he he explained the love of swami ji how he used to come how he used to do all the rituals and even now swami ji is continuing that the way swami ji worship we all have seen the way swami ji's devotion comes the moment he is in the temple and with so much passion swami ji always wants the temple should be the perfect thing the temple each and every aspect of temple is the best and favorite thing of swamiji that we all have seen and swamiji just love it to explain more like to uh, i would like to actually invite ma nityanandita and ma tatupriya in the panel to share the contribution of swamiji towards building the temples to revive this enlightened civilization so ma nityanandita and ma tatupriya you can come share uh, come and share kendam we would like to first offer our gratitude at swami ji's feet and we like to thank the kendra tv for giving us this opportunity because seeing what is happening day by day and what uh many uh, out of vested interest many people are spreading so many false uh, news and different things but this is a beautiful opportunity where we are able to actually tell what whatever we have seen with swami ji however he has worked hard it is such a beautiful platform and it's such a beautiful opportunity to present the contribution that swami ji has and especially talking about golden temple because from the time swami ji revealed his vision till the time that so even now kumbhabhishekam is going to happen so continuously his commitment towards it like i have seen from the time that even i joined how much time swami ji has put into it like there are so many meetings like uh, i have personally been there when uh, mr janardhan who is now talking ill about swami ji actually here there is a, i have a point to add here this is a little out of subject but i want to make a very important point here even 
many of the meetings where swamiji would meet with the stapatis swamiji will reveal the vision of the temple and swamiji will personally sit go through so many books for hours together getting references and not just that personally swamiji had went to so many trips so many travels in tamil nadu it's all over on facebook also so many uh, pictures everywhere it is that we all can see how each temple be it sri rangam rameshwaram every temple not just swamiji going of course swamiji has knowledge in all of it but every single sanyasi that is part of this project every single person there are so many people some from australia some from the us whoever came swamiji would take them make sure that this entire vision is understood by every single person so just this golden temple just this one aspect swamiji has put so much of life and today i when i see people talking about commenting about swamiji's work i just feel like telling one thing they are not even qualified to even talk about this not even one person of work has janardhan done to even talk about this talking about janardhan like i actually uh, before that i wanted to share a few more points see like how somji shares his vision somji explains the entire vision in complete detail and somji explains like the details in the sense where the power manifestors are going to be sitting how the entrance is going to be he envisioned the entire temple completely starting from the foundation till like how it will be viewed from the fifth praharam sixth praharam like that somji had a complete vision of this seeing all these and when som see like we have always seen when somji declares something he just makes it into reality same thing for even like we can actually proudly tell that our temple is the only place in the world where life power manifestors sit and manifest help you to connect with the deities manifest the power of that deity to you where you can physically see it live in front of you like this all these amazing dimensions started just being revived and coming into reality which is what started shaking the anti hindu elements and they started attacking swamiji actually, actually here uh, like there are multiple people who are involved in attacking see for every dimension of the contribution of swamiji there is a certain people who have some vested interest and because of which they do not want that knowledge to come out to the common public and they had con- like they conspire and want to attack swamji or make him some stop this work that is why if you see like the main thing is golden temple if it becomes a huge success people will be able to manifest anything they want people will start manifesting powers people will start having exposure to some of the amazing sciences of sanatan hindu dharma all these are agitating the anti hindu elements which is why they started attacking swamiji and one like the way janardhan was abusing this concept of temple itself making fun of it and literally ridiculing this very concept of temple so actually i was thinking why like if you see the way how these people like for example nakki or janardhan so like the tv reporter nakki or janardhan if you see how they frame swamiji it just shows what kind of a psychology they are in they keep trying to frame swamiji as a womanizer and it's so so ridiculous i'll share but people would have seen like who whom so any devotee people who have seen swamiji would know by experience there all age groups of people who live around swamiji swamiji is just untouched by anybody's presence and not just that actually uh, i want to add one point if you see that all the abusers and all the attackers when they talk they do not have any subject in which they can touch swamiji's contribution because they know any statement they make there's enough of evidence of the amount of hard work that swamiji is putting in that is why if you see even janardhan he tried in so many interviews about uh, uh, like swamiji is not contributing to temple etc not contributing to hinduism but 
because they were not able to touch anything of that aspect they knew that if they touch the truth will come out even more people will get to know even more about somebody's contribution that is why what they are inside like we'll say what we are what we think is what you will see in others and what we live is what the first point you'll see in others and, and that it is really why... applies to like i have physically seen right like how cheap he had so many affairs after having four children janardhan had affairs with multiple women and that is what he is exactly reflecting on swami ji otherwise just imagine and see how he was able to live, uh, leave his four, uh, three daughters and one son with swami ji for uh, uh, seven years and all of a sudden he flares up with this this shows clearly that mindset that he is having that because he is a womanizer that is what he is trying to frame swami ji also into this actually if you see swami ji's vision for golden temple itself is so in depth just listening to it we all can understand the consciousness that swami ji is giving on one side and how cheap these abuses on the, are on the other side thank you so much ma nityanandita and madhuri priya and we all can see swami ji is directly as param shiva has given the ancient signs of temple swami ji is reviving it bit by bit by his hard work by his own time talent treasure everything and such great example such testimony of swami ji's contribution swami ji's vision swami ji's love for temples and param shiva and for this humanity i can say it's the golden temple one of its unique kind which is nowhere available in the world samji is building that temple actually i want all of you to hear from samji himself that what is the vision what golden temple is going to give to humanity listen in every level if the existential reality is your purpose and the matrix is used as a supporting mechanism great my purpose is to enlighten people in this place to build a monument make a statement for the future generation the almost literally immortal statement for the whole future generation about the signs of enlightenment that is why the golden temple golden temple is nothing but a monumental statement i am leaving to the next generation understand what you leave to the next generation matters what do you leave to the next generation matters what i feel believe lived as the best thing in this universe i am making it as a monument and leaving it as a statement for my next generation understand every every one minute you spend for some purpose you give life to it energy to it value to it the more you work on the wall street the more the wall street buildings are going to become tall the more you work in the field of politics more the political buildings are going to become tall what you want to make leave as a statement for your next generation this temple the monument i am going to build for sadashiva is a monumental statement i am leaving for the next generation this is the best way to exist as per the teachings of sadashiva living manifesting his experience his expressions his powers and living in the supreme reality existential reality beyond any maya matrix is the ultimate 
I am making this statement to the generations to come by making this temple. That's all. The temple is a statement. I am leaving it for next generations. Naturally they will wonder why our forefathers built it, built such a large this will be the largest gold coated stone structure in the world. It will be complete world's most strongest granite. Understand world's most strongest granite is South Indian granite. It will be world's most strongest dark granite not black granite. Black is two dimensional of darkness. Dark is three dimension of black. So it is not black it is dark. Dark granite means even when you dig, 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 it will be continue to retain the same color. Black granite means only layers will be black. When you dig deep, the color will change. There is a difference. So the whole monument will be the dark granite, gold coated. Just to make a statement, living beyond the Maya matrix as demonstrated by Sadashiva is the best way to exist. Understand my purpose is to enlighten you all leave a statement for the future generation about this great science for that I have a ownership document of this land. So I am not under matrix. Understand. Look in. Today do this as an exercise. Is your purpose is existential reality. If your purpose is existential reality, even if you have billions, everything, you will not be under the matrix. But if your purpose is the artificial ignorance developed, you are already under the matrix. You will live and die within the matrix. Sex, we all heard from Swamiji. It's not only the it's structure Swamiji is building. It is a real bold statement which is for humanity. This very temple, as we all know that for this very temple, we are going to have Kumbha Vishekam on January 38th, 2020, which is going to be the grand celebration after 12 years. This rare time has come when the Kumbha Vishekam is going to happen. We all should know what exactly it is. What kind of celebrations are going to happen? What Kumbha Vishikam means? How this beautiful ritual is going to take place and how it is going to be useful for all of us. To present this, I would like to invite Pun Sanyasis of Nityananda Order, Ma Yanatma Swami and Ma Niti Bhaktikananda Swami Nityanandam. Nityanandam. Nityanandam, dear viewers, today we are very happy to share about the grand Kumbhabhishekam of Nityanandeshwara Paramishiva Devalaya in Adi Kailasha Sarvindhi Pita in Bidhi, Bengaluru. A little introduction to what is a Kumbhabhishekam. Kumbhabhishekam, roughly translated in English, translates to a ritualistic consecration ceremony. It is mandatorily performed once in 12 years in any Hindu temple to sanctify and to recharge the energy field of the temple. Now, what is Kumbhabhishekam? What really is Kumbhabhishekam? What is the science behind the Kumbhabhishekam? For re-energizing, recharging the energy field of the temple, certain Vedagamic rituals are done. Um, these rituals incorporate all the five elements of the nature 
and these five elements of nature are used to bring down tap the cosmic energy as you can see in the picture the space the akasha the element of akasha the space is energized by meditating on the divine on paramashiva on the divine the ultimate super conscious energy with the chanting of the mantras that energy in the space element is brought down to the air element then with the chanting of the mantras the super conscious energy the energy of parmashiva para shakti the energy of the deities into the fire element then the fire element the homa gumbha the receptacle is connected with the kalasha the kumbha means the pot which is filled with water and that energy from the fire element gets transferred into the water element and then that energized water is poured on, on the deities like you can see the picture where swamiji is doing the abhishekam with the kumbha with the kalasha so that energized water from the fire ritual is now poured on to the deities thereby recharging and reenergizing and strengthening the presence of the deities for the benefit of the world that is the science of homas what is the speciality of our kumbha abhishekam which is so special about the nityanandeshwara parameshwara temple in bidhi bengaluru with the swayambhulinga i would like to invite manati bhaktikananda swami to share the vision which manifested as the nityanandeshwara parameshwara hindu temple nityanandeshwara parameshwara devalaya in adi kailasha sarvanyam pita in bidhi Nityanandeshwari Paramashiva Nityanandeshwari Parashakti Temple in Adi Kailash in Bengaluru is very unique in every in every way for one usually temples are built on the jiva samadhis which is the final resting place of incarnations who have left their human form so in their final place the temple is built because their jiva samadhi their final resting place is an is like an energy station it continuously radiates energy so the temple is built on that and it becomes an independent enlightenment ecosystem radiating that energy continuously for the people living around the temple in fact in those days the way human settlement happened was temples were built first and around the temple people came and settled because the whole thing revolved around their own enlightenment that was the only agenda that was the main agenda for human civilization so temples were built and around these enlightenment ecosystems human settlement happened and you can see today in front of your own eyes whether it is tiruvannamalai the famous the sacred temple town in south india or madurai or for that matter any temple any of the ancient temples you can see that it is the temple town meaning the temple is in the heart and around that the settlement has happened so the people came and started living around the temple and their lifestyle was the temple based lifestyle all the rituals that happened in the temple in synchronicity with the temple bell with the temple bell that rang every time the main ritual was performed that temple bell was the wrist watch for the people who lived at that time they did not carry mobile phones or watches they actually went to the temple bell and they knew what they should be doing at that point in time and the fourth bell was heard or fifth bell was heard what they had to do in their own personal life routine it was such a beautiful temple based lifestyle it is not that they did not make money it is not that they did not have a living they were much more uh, they were much richer in inner and outer world than we can ever imagine because they lived a temple based lifestyle and every moment they were absorbing the energy from that temple which is a wireless energy transmission tower by itself and today you have if you just go to the internet and google you will see amazing videos on how the arunachaleshwara temple has been likened to a modern day tesla coil and how the famous kailasanatha temple in uh, elora maharashtra or the famous bradishwara temple in tanjavur the kumbhaka of witnessing uh, every single temple you will see how scientists and researchers around the world are studying each temple structure in detail 
and trying to present it scientifically to some of the modern day inventions, the modern day science discoveries, which are, have so much to catch up with our ancient India, ancient Vedic enlightened civilization called Sri Kailasa. So understand these temples are very scientifically built. And the speciality of our uh, temple in the Bangalore Adhinam is, while almost all temples today are built only on the Jiva Samadhis, final resting places of incarnations who left the body, this temple is built by the living incarnation of Paramashiva when he is living in the human form, when he is still living in the body. So it is a very, very rare energy station that is being built. And all the deities are energized, not just through the rituals that uh, invoke, you know, that, that, uh, that reflect the energy through the five elements. Through, that is the earth element, the water element, the fire element, the air element, and the ether element. When I say earth element, the deity itself is made of the earth element, the metal and earth. And when I say water element, I mean the sacred bath that is offered to the deities. And when we say invoking the energy presence through the uh, fire element, we, need, we are talking about the fire rituals, the homas, yagnas that happen in the temple. And when we say we're talking about the air element, we mean the mantras that are continuously chanted in the temple. Uh, the sacred utterances in the Sanskrit language, the Deva Bhasha, God's own language, the, uh, the vibrations of which have the energy, have the potential to even alter our own brain grooves and aid our conscious growth. And the ether element is, of course, the space, the very space. You sit there in meditation and you can connect with the ether element. So not the deities in this particular temple are not just the deities, uh, not just energized through these five elements, but they're energized directly through the living energy presence of the incarnation, who's an energy station himself. And they're consecrated itself. The prana pratishta, which is the most amazing technical process of installing a deity, installing a living independent energy, is done by the incarnation himself, not just ritualistically, but directly by the energy presence of Paramashiva. Where where we have seen Swamiji energizing through the prana pratishta, he installs the deity, where he touches the very agnya of the deity and creates the independent living energy intelligence out of the deity. So that is a very, very highlight of this temple. And of course... Thank you so much, uh, Manitya Bhaktikananda Swami, for uh, sharing about such a science. I know uh, I had to kind of uh, step in here because I really wanted to share this, uh, the Kumbha Vishikam schedule um, mm -hmm. before uh, we move on to today's uh, message from Sri Kailasa and the Darshan of Swamiji. Um, what really is going to happen um, during the Maha Kumbha Vishikam? On the 30th of January, the festivity is actually the celebrations, the celeb rituals, as Swamiji so beautifully calls it, the celebrations and the rituals start two days ahead of the actual Kumbhavishekam itself. So it starts on the 28th, which happens to be a Tuesday. So 28th morning, 8 a.m., it starts with Maha Ganapati Puja, Punya Havachanam, Devata Anujna, Acharya Varanam, Ganapati Lakshmi, Homas, Vishesha Mula Mantra Homa, Purna Hudi Dhipa Radhana. That happens in the morning from 8 o'clock onwards. And then evening 6 p.m. onwards, we have the Vastu Shanti, Pravesha Bali, Rakshogna, and Homa. And then one day before the actual Kumbhavi Shekam, from morning 9 o'clock, we start with Mrit Sangrahana, Samhita Homa, and Purti. Evening So I continue to read the Kumbhavishekam schedule for you. And one thing I want to tell you is the Kumbhavishekam schedule talks about so many rituals performed as per the Agamic tradition. And even though you may not be familiar with all of them, you, you, you just need to understand that there's such powerful rituals as per the Agamic tradition of Sanatana Hindu Dharma and you being present there, either physically in the Bengaluru Adinam or online, can make a huge difference to your life because each of it will invoke an auspicious energy of a particular deity and so powerfully radiated 
and that can enter into you and cause such a visible difference in your spiritual journey. So on the 29th uh, morning, we have uh, morning 9, 9 a.m. onwards, we have the Mrit Sangraharana, Samhita Homa and Purti. And on the 29th evening, 6 p.m. onwards, we have the Vigneshwara Puja, the Punyaga Vachanam, the Ang the Angurapam, Rakshabandhanam, Acharya Varanam, Kumbha Alankaram, Kala Karshana, Yagashala, Pravesha, which are all the first Kala Pujas. And of course, we have the Ashtadasha Kriya, the Yantra Stapanam, and the Ashtabandhana Samarpanam. And we have the Tatvarchana, Sparsha Ahuti, Purnahuti, and the Deeparadhana, which is the first level Kala Pujas. And then moving on to the next day, which is the Final day of this three day Kumbhabhishekam ceremony, which is the 30th morning, five months, have the second Kala Pujas, which is the Abhuta Mahayaga, the Mula Mantra Homas, the Shan Shannavati Vishesha Dravya Homas, the Purna, the Yantradana, and the Kalasa Purapade, which is actually carrying the waterfall so beautifully on the heads of the uh, Shivacharyas and uh, they, they will be offering the sacred water which has been energized through all these powerful rituals and homas. They'll be offering it on the temple structure and the temple deities. And the Ashtabandana Mahakumbhabhishekam. The Ashtabandana Mahakumbhabhishekam, which is the main ceremony itself of offering this water, the sacred water, uh, and uh, offering it to all the deities in the temple and the temple structure and to all the people who have gathered there, which is you. And the people watching online, okay, who should receive it virtually, the water from the Kalasha, the water pots. And that happens precisely between 9.30 a.m. and 11.13 a.m. on 30th of January. So please do not miss it. It is the Maha Abhishekam. And that will be followed by the Alankaram, the Dibaradhana, and the Prasadam, which is after everything is over, we give the, as per our tradition, we give the food offering that has been offered to the deities after this auspicious ceremony. And all of us will partake of that divine food offering called Nevidyam. So that is really the three day uh, ceremony. So uh, we would like to actually invite on behalf of Sri Kailasa, we would like to invite each and every one of you, all our viewers, all our devotees, the Nityananda Sangha members, all the Sri Kailasa Vasis and everyone who is watching this, we would like to invite each and every one of you to come and attend this grand Kumbhabhishekam that's going to happen in the Nityanandeshwara Paramashiva Devalaya in Adhikailasha Sarvanya Pita in Bidadi, Bengaluru. And if you can come there physically, please come with your friends and family and participate in one of the most um, sacred rituals that's going to happen, which is the re-energization of that space, not just the space outside in the temple, but the divine space inside of us. So if you are not able to come physically, please join us online. We will be relaying the the festivities, the celebrate rituals, all the agamic, Veda agamic rituals on our, um, you know, social media platforms on our Nityananda TV. So please do join us along with your family. And this is going to be a very grand Kumbhabhishekam, which is going to happen once in 12 years. So after 2020, the next Kumbhabhishekam is likely to be in 2032. So let's not wait for 12 years. Let's uh, experience the Kumbhabhishekam now itself. So we are projecting the invitation on our screen and with this we would actually like to traditionally you know we invite with the manja patrike we call the LO traditional invitation so we would like to invite each and every one of you with the traditional invitation from our temple to come and participate and enjoy and experience this grand kumbhabhishekam with that i would like to now have all of us ready to receive today's message from shri kailasa and to receive the darshan of our beloved Swamiji, His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam. Let us prepare ourselves with the chanting of the Mahavakya, Om Nityananda Paramashivam. Nityananda. Om Nityananda Paramashivam. Oh, 
Connecting with the Divine, with your eyes closed, is meditation. Connecting with the Divine. With your eyes open is darshan. Come, let us all now move from meditation to darshan. Slowly, very slowly, please open your eyes.
Anandam. So as we heard from Songji, that today we are going to have a very special session for power manifestation. If you see the whole thing, Songji very beautifully shared that power manifestation is the most important thing. That's what we should be doing it every single day. And to manifest the power, like Swami shared that when you read about the enlightened masters, then it's like you, you get the understanding. But when you read about the avatar incarnations, when you see their life journey, you start manifesting powers. And when we start manifesting powers, we attain oneness with Paramashiva. We start falling in love with Paramashiva again and again. And as much what we feel about ourselves, the same thing we will feel about Paramashiva, the same thing we will feel about Swamiji. If you love yourself, you will love Paramashiva and of course, <laughs> you will love Swamiji. Or I can say vice versa, you love Swamiji, everything will fall in place. But such a beauty that you just need to read what incarnation has already gone through, how he has written the whole history. When we just read about it, we will start manifesting powers effortlessly without having any of tapas, without having any of our contribution in it or any effort which we need to do. It just, when we just read about Swamiji, Swamiji makes us manifest powers and makes us fall into love with Paramashiva again and again. And we have and you must be thinking where to read about it if the viewers, those who have joined now, I would like to tell them today, Autobiography of the Avatar. The website has been launched today and you all can go and read about Swamiji's autobiography. When you read about it, you will start, simply you will start manifesting powers. This whole cycle Swamiji has made us so available to us that it's just right there in your mobile. You just need to read, start reading Samji's autobiography. And with that, we have, this is like how Samji explained about Diksha. Reading about the autobiography is also a Diksha. The moment that Diksha happens, you start manifesting powers. I have Mahaprema Mananda Swami in the panel with me today to share something more about Diksha, that what happens when a person takes Diksha, the way Diksha happens, the way Swamiji initiates, how you can achieve that space of Paramashiva. So I would like to request Ma Prematananda Swami to come forward and share with us. Nityananda Thank you, Maniki Bhakti Priyanandama. Every day satsang that we hear from Swamiji, of course, we get a deeper understanding and not only understanding, we get the initiation. We have come across many people in life and we have been in the situation of reading about enlightened masters' life, hearing about their life stories, the journeys, how they attain enlightenment, and we feel very inspired. And we also wonder, how is that possible for me? How can I achieve it? And we have come through a long journey. And of course, we are fortunate that we found the source itself who can just initiate us and give us that experience. And as Swamiji said, when you read the life story, the autobiography of an enlightened being, it inspires it. But if you need the initiation, when you read the autobiography of the avatar, that is an initiation, means that becomes an experience, experience in us. There are so many people in the world who are reading books after books after books, dry knowledge maybe, or trying to seek or find or have that glimpse of that experience. What can we do is introduce them to the source introduce them to the Shiva Diksha that is happening this weekend, the, the Diksha into power manifestation, a special two-day program so people can get that time to 
learn, experience, get the Diksha from Swamiji himself and start manifesting powers and of course get their own Atmalinga. Today we wanted to share this beautiful experience of one such devotee who have experienced, who has experienced the power of this Diksha, who was fortunate enough to get the Diksha directly from Swamiji and who is going to share with us his experience with getting this Shiva Diksha from Swamiji and also having this Atmalinga with him always. Nityanandam everyone. My name is Anand Satyajata Shivam. I am from Bangalore, working as a manager in software engineering for a software company. I came to know about the Swamiji's Diksha program through the live satsang that happens uh, every day morning as well as evening on YouTube. Regarding my experience about Swamiji's mandala process and Diksha, it was my first time visiting Gadi Kailash, my beloved master's breathing space. So as soon as I reached the Adhinam, I took some sand and I put it on my forehead. And then I saw Lord Ganapati there outside. And as soon as I entered on the right side, there was Kala Bhairava, who I have been seeing only on YouTube. But the first time when I got to see him in person, it was an amazing experience. I took his blessings and then uh, really felt fortunate actually. I felt really fortunate and blessed and grateful to have made it to Adi Kailash, the abode of Paramashiva, a place where I always wanted to go from I don't know how many years but never, somehow didn't happen. Uh, after the darshan of Kala Bhairava, I met the Sangha members. They were extremely helpful and they guided us into the initiation program. I would like to thank uh, Ma Ganga especially in guiding me. And then the context was set by Ma Bhaktika uh, about what the initiation is and understanding what the right context is. Right. So that was very important for me to understand what it really means. And then after some time uh, Swamiji's darshan happened. Uh, Swamiji came out of uh, Samadhi and when he smiled, uh, for some reason, I don't know what happened in me, uh, just tears started flowing out through my eyes when I saw Swamiji smiling and just coming out of Samadhi and looking at all of us. And then after some time, Swamiji started talking about the, uh, the initiation process and when he gave the Shiva Mantra to all of us, I experienced unclutching and the oneness with Paramashiva, what, what, is, what I've always heard. And I knew that my identity was going to be changed forever from whatever I thought I was to Paramashiva himself. What's my message to everyone who's seeing this video? From my perspective, uh, attending the Diksha process, it's a calling that comes from within depending on your soul's maturity it's very rare to find a genuine spiritual master who is Shiva himself by now who's, whoever has been following Swamiji must know that God and Guru are one and the same so this is so first of all getting a realized master who is available is so so much rare that this is actually a once in a multi lifetime opportunity so Please make use of it when you still have the chance. Swamiji is so compassionate that he is giving away his Atmalinga free of cost to all of us. What better blessing can be there on planet earth at this point of time, I wonder. Realizing Paramashiva is something that all of us have been seeking in some form or the other. When the Paramashiva in you wants to realize himself through you, he will give Diksha to you as your Guru. After the Diksha, I started seeing conscious intervention in my life by Paramashiva, who is now with me in the form of Atmalinga. 
I keep him with me everywhere, wherever I go. It's always with me. I started a very strong. I'm having a very strong feeling connection with the Atma Linga. No challenge seems difficult after that because I am not the one who's working on the challenge. It's him. There was a very difficult meeting at work yesterday, and uh, I just prayed Swamiji in the form of Atma Linga with me to make it easy for me. Uh, and I don't know what happened after that because. The next thing I know is the meeting was over. Everybody was appreciating me, and I don't even know what I did and what I said. <laughs> so it's like I'm not the doer anymore. That's how I feel. I would like to end here with a quote from Swamiji, which accurately summarizes my feeling after getting the diksha from Swamiji. I am feeling that I'm in a untouched space, and the quote that swami ji says brahmarpanam brahmahave brahmagnau somehow this clicked in me and this is clicking in me right now i feel that the resources that are in front of me whether at work or at home are from the cosmos the experience that i am getting is from the cosmos the expression is to the cosmos then who am i in this whole thing claiming responsibility thank you very much nityanandam Mm, that was such a beautiful sharing we heard from uh, anand from bangalore so what we can do is enrich share this beautiful diksha with the world if you have not attended already register and if you have already benefited and if you are enjoying the power of atma linga with you every day actually there are many more sharings that we want to share with you where people are using it for their own healing somebody was sharing one doctor actually was sharing that he was using the atma linga for distance healing and he was able to heal this patient which he normally who would suffer for hours to be healed within 5 minutes so many wonderful miracles are happening with the atma linga that you can also have once you attend and receive the shiva diksha from swami ji himself from bhagwan shri nityananda parmeshwar so don't wait please to register and reap the benefits of this beautiful weekend program swami ji says that even when god comes he has to come only in the weekend for us to receive him so this is made convenient for everyone around the world in your time zone that you can attend this program in the weekend so please do register and if you have already and uh, are attending or have attended please share share with the world so they can also enjoy the benefits of this program thank you nityananda Nityanandam. So after this beautiful power manifestation initiation by Swamiji, I mean, such beautifully Swamiji said that life has to be with power manifestation. You have to do the only thing which we should be doing is power manifestation because that is the ultimate. And without you doing any effort, it's possible for you. just one thing need to be done as you all as you all know swamiji shared that just by reading swamiji's autobiography you will start manifesting powers as you can see the autobiography website on the screen you can visit the website start reading and just start manifest powers because when you read avatars biography when you read their life 
you start you get initiated you get diksha and that diksha results in bhav manifestation and you start falling in love with parameshwara again and again and again and of course that is song ji himself so all the viewers those who are watching make sure that today you all must read and must visit the website must read somji's autobiography so that all of us can start manifesting the powers and today somji gave a special diksha also so let us all make our lifestyle let us live the lifestyle like parameshwara who manifest 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 so without a delay we should be only reading immediately after satsang when you finish the power manifestation must go to autobiography of the avatar website as you can see the link on the screen and the website must go and read let us start life with parameshwara let us fall into his love again and again so with this time for power manifestation so we are having a special shri kala support your sessions where you are specially guided towards power manifestation so let us all without a delay enter into power manifestation if you further have any questions any kind of feedback you wanted to give or any review which you have you can visit our official website which is www.kalasa.org you have live chat option where you can reach out to us 24/7 for shared time zone you are in any time you are most welcome you can always come and visit and ask your questions or give your feedback also you can reach out to us through a email which is contact@kalasa.org and don't forget to go and read autobiography of the avatar which is swamiji's autobiography itself and you can see this link on the screen so with this let us all get ready to manifest powers and uh, let's enter into shri kalasa kodya session so see you all tomorrow at the same time same channel and thank you so much thank you for watching nityananda nityananda paramashivoham om nityananda paramashivoham start the power manifestation session let's sit straight visualize bhagwan in the third eye and start with the satguru vandanam nityanandam paramasukadam kevalam jnana murtim dvandva dikam gakana sadarsham tatpamasya dilakshyam 
ಏಕಮಲಮಚನಂ ಸರ್ವೇಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದಂ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ಕೈಲಾಶ ಕೋಟ್ಯಾರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಪಾಸಿಷನ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಸಚ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಇಮ್ಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಲವ್ and immense joy that swamiji is radiating and making us radiate that's the most beautiful once it was so beautiful that uh, swamiji uh, everybody starts recognizing their guru and uh, there are so many devotees who do not recognize and simply go searching for their guru the minute you see swamiji you know that he is shiva he is happening inside you as parmashiva that very moment swamiji has chosen us simply we can understand only because he is inside you he can even recognize you can even recognize only if you know suppose sandwich then only you recognize it because you already know it same way only you know swamiji because he is inside you you recognized him because he recognized you inside you that is the most beautiful part he is giving us such a beautiful space for us to more and more becoming him the beautiful space that more and more our delusion just wither away and more and more becoming swami ji himself parameshwara himself manifesting all the shaktis he beautifully says an inspiring uh, enlightened master will be only inspiring an avatar is really initiating reading his leela will understand the highest possibility how he handles his body his cognitions how he is and how he views the whole world even when so many things are happening not even a slight disturbance in him that something is happening to him something is going on and simply he is in the joy of parameshwara trying to understand that it is so beautiful one day the god of darkness went and complained that uh, the sun god is always throwing her out and uh, so they decided to tell her you go and bring the sun i will tell the sun not to disturb you so can the darkness ever go and bring the sun it can never happen like that our unconscious our day struggles and impossible can never comprehend simply you being shiva inside you you recognizing the shiva inside you manifest as the greatest reality in you each and every beautiful space that swami ji gives us our anxiety our worry nothing is matter only we understand his autobiography we understand that nothing is a matter yes nothing is matter it's simply the only oneness with parama shiva the space of suddha advaita that he talks about such a beautiful loving space the oneness is only thing which matters and nothing else matters in the whole world experiencing that space and making us experience and removing all other component in us to experience the deep love which is actually him manifesting in all of us and one becoming many and enjoying the whole bliss so experiencing the great space of oneness we'll start the mahapa manifestation today let's start with the shastra pramana the beautiful space that he is given us from shiva sutra sutra 20 the shastra pramana for the power moving hair from the body to the third eye is taken from the shiva sutra sutra 20 bhuta sandhana bhuta pratakva vishwa samgatta ha bhuta sandhana bhuta pratakva vishwa samgatta ha such a beautiful space if you understand how 
the Kannappa Nayanar. This brings us how one of the great Nayanamars in 63 Nayanamars, the Kannappa Nayanar, he was such a, such a love with Shiva. He was enjoying the Shiva and he'll wait for going and celebrating the Shivalinga. He goes and sings every day with Shivalinga and one day suddenly he sees the eyes of Shivalinga. He's so excited seeing the eyes and suddenly he sees the eyes literally having the blood coming out. Immediately he tries to fix the eyes with some herbs, but it doesn't work. He simply says, okay, I have an eye. Let me give my eye. He doesn't even think this is a matter. It will go through a pain. He'll have some problem. He just plucks his eyes and puts it into Shiva's eyes. And again, one more eye starts again having the blood. Simply he keeps his foot on one of the leg to know where to pluck in the eyes and starts removing the second eye. Simply Paramashiva gives the darshan and ultimately under, makes him understand the beautiful space of oneness that he is in and becomes one and the supreme space of ultimate, the Suddhadvaita space itself. Even the beautiful uh, Siddhars, one of the Siddhars, Karura, and Machinder, Karura goes to buy some food for uh, Machinder and he was uh, made fun of what? You're asking for some vada for your uh, guru. Will you, uh, if your guru asks for the eye, will you give? Simply he plucks the eyes and gives it and says, can you give me the vada? It was so simple as though you take the money from the pocket and give it. And then um, Machinder asks, what happened to your eyes? And he says, uh, they said they will give only vada if I give the eyes, I gave it and came. Simply he manifests the eyes again back to his disciple. The way the Siddhas played with all these great signs as Pa manifestation that Swamiji is talking about were ultimate, just ultimate, how they are able to join, put together, separate it, anything they were able to do so beautifully. Just a short clipping of Kannapai Nayana, we are going to play now. The recording has stopped. A beautiful space. This meeting is being recorded. How Kanapanayana showed the ultimate possibility when he is in oneness. Only that matters is again and again Paramashiva in you. How much he is waiting for you, how much he loves you, and how much he is radiating through you. Just being in that and all other what we are going through, whatever the pleasure, pain, whatever we are going through is simply a dream. Again and again, he reiterates by showing the ultimate in us, the beautiful Shastra Pramana, Apta Pramana, and Atma Pramana that Swamiji himself has manifested so many possible ways. When he had a fracture and 
he himself had his own leela played and he was holding the fracture and with no pain at all as though it, the pain had happened for somebody else and the first thing when he fell we were all standing and like totally shocked uh, but he simply said first word he said don't worry and as though we are the first person to be taken care at the point he said don't worry i let's go to hospital probably it is broken what kind of probably it is broken it is multiple fracture and it is un you can't see him fall down from the horse and have so many fractures we are shaking so the first thing he takes care of us and then he ask us to take him to the hospital the possibility that the avatar really goes through in each and every leela to tell us this world is just a myth it is not how how we perceive it the reaction can be completely gone if we understand that it is in the dream how he is manifesting all these uh, just as a show just as on leela ramakrishna ramana marshi was once correcting an autobiography where he had uh, the disciple write all kinds of things he corrected the grammar and gave it and the disciple went to the printer and he gave it to the printer to print the printer was shocked he said what kind of autobiography is this you written uh, Ra ramakrishna paramahamsa has uh, ramana marshi sorry has got married he had kids and then only he got enlightened he got enlightened in 17 years what you are writing your own story he takes the books and run to his bhagwan to see what he want, had to say and he told Ra, ramana mashi what he has written is all lies ramana mashi simply smiles and says okay you write your version so what each one write your version it is all your own versions of the dream that's all such a beautiful space they occupy they don't see is how can you write such wrong thing about me a false thing why are you hurting me nothing such a beautiful intense love just manifest through every moment such a beautiful space we need to occupy now we'll see some shakshi pramana where they have manifested this power of removing hair or making more hair happen in their body that's a beautiful uh, space how it has grown just in 15 20 minutes that's a very beautiful clipping even all these pa manifestation is something really small it is really beautiful how swami ji is manifesting through us he says it's a seed how some seed sprout and become the tree some seed becomes the manure let's go to the instruction such a beautiful space that bhagwan creates in all of us to experience the great reality the experiences small or big doesn't matter the quality matters the quantity simply will happen once we understand the greatest signs in us is happening simply one by one will unfold in us the beautiful space we need to have is just be in oneness with parameshiva the beautiful darshan and his snake today you can just be in the beautiful space of his initiation and contemplate on the great truth like how he said the kashmiri pandit gave the greatest signs all the great things that he is giving us not being stuck and again and again the reaction less of reaction my devotee should not have anxiety to understand that whatever it is the plus and the minus that we are going through all the negatives all the positive that we are going through is simply a dream how you would get up in the morning whether it is a good dream or bad dream you will get up in the morning and understand it is just a dream so wake us wake yourself up contemplate on this great truth that you are shiva that is why you are able to recognize him so beautifully so be in that only space the beautiful space uh, you remove everything in the deep sleep we don't have the body we don't have the mind we don't have the thought but something we have that deep happiness 
even if we want to switch off the alarm and sleep for 5 more minutes we want to do that why is that because there's so much joy from the body what we get not from the food not from the what we see what we wear ourselves we have nothing in the deep sleep absolutely nothing but we want to go back to that deepest sleep again and again because we are experiencing that great oneness but unconsciously again and again if we are able to experience that consciously whenever we want how beautiful that space will be so connect to the highest possibility in you that is again and again having us and all these other things are like alarm clock switch it off and start experience oneness with parameshiva let's sit straight with the head neck and back in a straight line connect to parameshiva connect to swami ji deeply and with your contemplate on these great truth and chant the mahavakya that is the ultimate key to connect you to parameshiva so chant from your navel deep listening continuously let's chant om nityananda parameshivoham parameshivoham Om Nityananda Param 
a beautiful and intense experience more and more swamiji gives us the possibility of manifesting powers manifesting powers should be the whole day not just the end of the day or just during the session but the whole day we understand we are manifesting everything there is nothing which is going on the past is already gone there is nothing there only what swamiji is happening in you and constantly ma manifesting your day and more and more your reality and more and more you understand that greater science how swamiji says no anxiety simply the kundalini shakti and the pure love that experience that you have the feeling connection with swamiji the deep trust him happening through you and more and more whatever you experience please share in the sri kailasha courtyard manifesting power group whenever we enrich we are getting pulled out of the delusion the more and more we enrich people with whatever swami ji is giving all these great truth we are getting pulled out <coughs> of the delusion and more and more you cause more people to be part of the satsang be part of this power manifestation simply the space that you are shifting in them is actually the reflection of you shifting you the more people are into the beautiful space of oneness with parameshwara you are getting grounded and liberated that is why enriching and causing directly parameshwara works on you the integrity authenticity and responsibility is something we are putting the effort but here in enriching and causing simply we become parameshwara and multiply ourselves to many parameshwaras so the more we start doing that parameshwara is in such a happy space because we are doing exactly what we came here to celebrate him so more and more share with everybody if you have manifested great if you have not manifested share who whoever has manifested to the world as many groups as possible as many people as possible let us get liberated it is our opportunity our breakthrough not for anybody else if they benefit that's a different thing but for us to get pulled out from delusion and get liberated this is the easiest to be and the most beautiful way just because you share with 10 people and one person come there's nothing for parameshwara parameshwara knows to connect everybody beautifully we are just connecting ourselves by sharing and causing others in our life a reflection of us that is what we are making the whole thing happen understand the avatar leelas and beautiful space how again and again contributing in others life is making our life happen and we have such a beautiful boon and a gift that jan 30th we can offer the pratyaksha pada puja go ahead and be there in the pada puja gurus padukas everything for us the more and more we are able to surrender at the lotus feet the more and more we'll understand the greatest possibility that shiva himself has chosen us each one of us to experience the ultimate if you have not chosen you will not know that you are it you are here so you are chosen into the such a beautiful space so let's enjoy and celebrate that beautiful space by offering our gratitude our ultimate space all that we know all our knowledge everything surrendering at the lotus feet simply makes us into the enlightened space so go ahead don't miss the opportunity each and every time we start falling into the beautiful oneness 
be raised into the beautiful space of Swamiji's love for us. So more and more we start engaging ourselves and contributing by bringing in more people to do contribute to the lotus feet makes us understand the higher reality. Here nobody is benefiting, nobody is getting anything out of anything. Here the only thing is the more and more the space of oneness, the space of Shiva in us needs to be awakened. Here beautifully at Swamiji's lotus feet simply by surrounding or surrendering all that we know and all that we don't know simply makes us manifest the ultimate Shiva himself manifesting through us. It becomes more grounded because he himself is working on us directly. So don't miss the beautiful opportunity that Swamiji is opening up for us. Each and everything he is giving us a boon. So let's start experiencing the ultimate that Paramashiva has come down as my Guru and making me manifest all these great signs. With that, let's surrender to Swamiji's lotus feet. More and more we surrender to Swamiji's lotus feet all the Shaktis and powerful cognition. The more we are empowered with the ultimate knowledge and ultimate experiences. So with a deep gratitude and prayerful space, let's pray to Swamiji to make all these great signs as our existential reality. With that, let's visualize Bhagwan in a third eye and end with the Purna Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnamudashit Purnasya Purnamataya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Om Tatsat Sarvam Bhagavate Sri Nityanda Parmashyam Padukar Panamastu Om Nityanandam